Thank you, Daniel from Albuquerque, New Mexico, for allowing me to use this deck in one of these videos. He's put a lot of heart and soul into this deck, and I'm impressed to see his dedication to it and almost completely foiling it out with promos and all. A quick note though, since Daniel has a ton of alternate versions of cards, I'm bound to get some of the arts wrong in the video, so I apologize in advance for not getting them all correct in your deck. Thanks again, Daniel. Edgar Markov is such a good commander. Probably one of, if not the best commander from the 2017 precon. There's almost no other vampire tribal commander I'd go with, honestly. He always creates a free vampire as long as we cast vampire spells, even if he's in the command zone. And if he's out on the battlefield, he'll buff our other vampires when he attacks. Edgar is just so good. Vampire good stuff. Starting this party, we've got the best vamps on the block. Nothing but value from here on out. Bloodgast, classic right here, low to the Grand Vampire that can return from our graveyard to the battlefield whenever you just have a landfall. Vampire Nighthawk and Nighthawk Scavenger, my personal favorite vampires right here. No deck would be complete without a Vampire Nighthawk or at least something with flying, death, torture, lifelink, and these both have all of those things, so you check all the boxes with them. Love it. Vampire Socialite and Draina, Liberator of Malakir. Vampire Socialite makes all of our vampires stronger as long as the opponent lasts life this turn, and this Drano makes your attacking vampires bigger as they attack. Cordial Vampire and Patron of the Vein. These both make our vampires larger when things die, and Patron of the Vein kills something on entry and exiles all creatures our opponents control when they die. Crossway Troublemakers. These brutes give all our vampires death, touch, and lifelink, there it is again, and they allow us to draw cards from our other vampires dying. Draina the Last Blood Chief, and Olivia Crimson Bride. Want to get our vampires back from the graveyard? Me too! These two will facilitate that for us and allow us to reuse our undead resources. Knight of the Ebon Legion, Olivia Voldaren, and Yeheni Undying Partesian. There's a ton of text on all of these, but they basically all make themselves bigger with plus one plus one counters, and have amazing secondary abilities as well, like indestructibility or stealing creatures. Vampire Minions. Now this section is all about making token creatures to do the Vampire Overlords proud. Mavrin, Fane, Dusk Apostle. Whenever one or more vampires we control attack, you create a 1-1 vampire with lifelink. Elenda, the Dusk Rose. She gets bigger whenever other creatures die, and then when she dies, you create that many 1-1 lifelink vampires. Bloodline Keeper makes 2-2 vampires, and then when it flips into Lord of Lineage, it gives a nice 2-2 buff to all our vampires, and it still has that tap ability to make more vampires. Voldaren Bloodcaster. This creates blood tokens, then later when it flips into Bloodbat Summoner, it turns those blood tokens into bats. I think this card is just super neat mechanically, and I love the creativity on this one. Timothar, Baron of Bats. Speaking of bats, when you pay one, when one of your vampires dies, you make another bat. Hey, look at that. And when that bat deals combat damage to a player, you return the exiled card to play tapped. Massive value right here. Life lost is life gained. What's a vampire deck without a little life suction and gain? We suck, we gain. <laughs> Probably not the best slogan, but, but you get it, right? Asterion the Decadent. On our end up, we choose to gain life equal to our life gain this turn, or we have an opponent lose life equal to the life they lost this turn. This can get out of hand really fast. Sanctum Seeker and Blood Artist. Whenever our vampires attack, our opponents lose life and we gain life. And Blood Artist makes opponents lose life and lets us gain life when creatures die. Malakir Blood Witch. Each opponent loses life equal to the number of vamps we control and we gain life equal to the life lost. Twilight Prophet makes our opponents lose life and we gain life equal to the mana value of the top card of our library on our upkeep as long as we have the city's blessing. Vito, Thorn of the Dusk Rose, and Blood Tribute. These two create a very nasty two card combo in which an opponent could die in one go. You just have to kick Blood Tribute and the kicker cost is negligible. Cast Blood Tribute Kicked, force an opponent to lose half their life and you gain that much life. Then Vito does that much damage again once you gain that life. Man, I love it. Lords of the Night. These may not all be creatures, but the Lord effect is strong in any tribal deck. And vampires have some really great buffs. Legion Lieutenant and Captivating Vampire. Simple Lord effects on these, granting a plus one plus one buff. And Captivating Vampire can also steal other creatures by tapping your vampires. Uh, he's quite the charmer. 
Stromkirk Captain Vampire Staple right here. Plus one, plus one, and first strike for all of our vampires. They told me it couldn't be done, guys. Edgar Charmed Groom. The old man here makes all his cronies bigger, but it also makes more vampires when it's flipped into Edgar Markov's coffin. Now, this just starts the process over again. It just kind of flips back and forth, back and forth. Gramps here knows how to treat his brood. Micaeus the Unhallowed is strong in his own right and also gives our non-humans plus one, plus one, and undying. One of the most frustrating abilities to play against. Oh, my thing died. Oh, well, now it's back from the dead and is bigger. Just, just play against that a lot. It, it, it'll change your life. Vampire Nocturnus. As long as you have a vampire on top of your deck, your vampires get plus two, plus one, and flying. I love this card so much. I was so baffled when I first saw it when I started playing Magic. Uh, just how cool. Icon of Ancestry and Vanquisher's Banner. Both of these have an easy plus one, plus one buff, and they have a couple extras that help move the deck along nicely. Soren makes an entrance. Daniel told me that the first magic cards he ever laid eyes on were from the first Innistrad set. He took one look at Soren and he knew he liked him a ton. So where would Daniel's deck be without some Soren love? Soren Markov, of course, where it all began. I don't think anyone has ever used his first ability. <laughs> you can force an opponent down to just 10 life just like that. This has happened to me in a game once. I was at 40 life and then all of a sudden it was 10. It was it was a little bit humiliating. <laughs> but why would you ever use his plus two ability? Because you know he's going to die really fast after that happens. So yeah, he doesn't stay out for very long. Soren Imperious Bloodlord. This Soren seems kind of meh at first glance, but he keeps getting better and better the more you look at it. He only costs three mana, he buffs your vampires, he deals direct damage to any target, and he lets you play a vampire for free from your hand. And he uses that ult ability the turn he comes out. What the heck? This one is so good. Soren, Lord of Innistrad, another killer card. His minus two just gives you an emblem that always beefs up your creatures, plus one, plus oh. And he makes a one, one vampire with lifelink, and he destroys creatures and planeswalkers, and then makes them our own. I'm blown away by how much Soren can do. And last but not least, Soren, uh, this is Soren, Solemn Visitor. This one is similar to the previous one, giving a buff, making a token creature, and also making our opponents sack their creatures with his ult emblem. Now, maybe it's not as flashy as the other Sorens, but this one can sure be mean. Getting ahead. Staying one step ahead, or a hundred years ahead in the case of vampires, is crucial in these kinds of decks. If we can't get to the next set of vampires, we'll be behind the whole game, so this is very crucial. Viscera Seer, simple sack outlet right here, while also scrying to stay half a step ahead of everyone else. Rakavan Nimble Pilferer, now Rakavan is going to be good in most red decks, creating mana value as well as stealing cards from our opponent's libraries, and monkeys literally don't get better than this, especially in vampire tribal decks. Sensei's Divining Top. Of course, the top always allows us to stay as far ahead as we want, it feels like, and nothing but unfair value when you have this card out. Bolus's Citadel. This Citadel makes for a great card advantage engine, especially since we'll be gaining life in this deck. Just pay life rather than mana for your spells and just keep on slamming new things onto the battlefield. Just keep a watchful eye. This one gets very out of hand very fast. Card draw. Now of course we need to draw some cards again. Staying ahead is key. Esper Sentinel. Every white deck needs this card, if you've got the money for it, that is. We'll almost always draw off its ability, and keeping ahead with this just makes things way faster for us in a non-blue deck, honestly. Champion of Dusk. ETB, draw X cards and lose X life, where X is the number of vampires you control. And in an Edgar Markov deck, you're definitely going to be drawing a ton of cards off this guy. Falconrath Pit Fighter. If you've got the mana, vampires, and an opponent has lost life this turn, you'll be able to draw some cards off this one. It seems like a lot of hoops you have to jump through, but honestly, it's not really as bad as it seems, especially in Commander. Necropotence. Probably one of, if not the strongest black card in all of Commander. Necropotence keeps us as far ahead as we want as long as we have life. Sure, we get the cards from the top of our library on our next end step, but that by itself creates so many other combos that are just far and beyond crazy. I'm not, I'm not here to discuss this card exclusively though, so let's just move on and just say it's an amazing card. 
finding an answer. If staying ahead and card draw didn't keep us in the lead, a few great tutors will make sure we'll always be on top. Enlightened Tutor, search for an artifact or enchantment card. Now there aren't many of those in the deck, but all the ones we have are all super strong. Next we have Diabolic Intent, Demonic Tutor, Grim Tutor, Profane Tutor, and Vampiric Tutor. These cards all basically do the same thing. Search for a card, put it into our hand, or put it on top of our deck, and there's, there's some variance to manual values and such, but at the end of the day, they all do the same thing. Destruction. Sometimes others get in the way, and Daniel made sure that when he played this deck against me, he was, he was quite aggressive and he was quite the foe to be reckoned with. Uh, so yeah, this is a great, great section for this deck. Vandal Blast, of course, is the best artifact killer in the entire game. Always a must in any red deck. D-Spark, Anguished Unmaking, and Swords to Plowshares, and these kind of exile some stuff, plain and simple. Mortify, this destroys a creature or enchantment. Dam and Damnation, these two are about the same as long as you overload a dam, but it can also be a single target removal as well if you need that more in the moment. Extras. Where would any deck be without some extras? Cards that don't fit in any specific category on their own. And here are Daniels. Underworld Breach. This is a nice one to be able to cast things from your graveyard. Always a nice one turn trick. Patriarch's Bidding. Speaking of graveyard return, this will return all our vampires into play. And it also returns our opponent's things uh, as long as they've got kind of a tribal deck. But I'm sure not many people are playing those, right? Teferi's Protection. As always, protect yourself by phasing out for a turn. The best protection in the game, hands down. There's a lot of those in the deck. Lolth, Spider Queen. This one seemed a bit odd to me at first, but Lolth really gives some amazing benefits, like drawing cards and making extra meat shields. But Lolth also makes an emblem that forces opponents to always lose at least 8 life when your creatures deal damage to them. As long as you can get one damage through, that opponent will still just lose an extra 7 life. It's really quite cool, and don't forget to pair this with some other combo cards that we've seen in the deck. Ramp. Now once again, my deck guides don't include a mana ramp section because I've already covered mana ramp in a couple other videos. You can check those out here on this card up in the upper right hand corner of the screen. Thank you so much for watching and a big, big thank you to Daniel. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe so you don't miss any of Daniel or his friends' decks for your weekly dose of magic. To support this channel, visit the TCG Player affiliate link in the description below. And if you want to support the channel directly, visit patreon.com slash Manfred plus magic. As a patron, you'll have access to the community discord where you can talk with myself and other friends about all things magic. And you'll find even more benefits for each tier, starting at $1 as a copper.